Coach, even if it's relatively minor and you get good news on John Wall's knee, do you look out into the schedule a bit and see the All-Star game there in mid-February? And do you have a sit-down with John and say, look, it's great that you're recognized as an All-Star, but you're going to have to sit this one out because you need to rest the knee. Is that something that, that you've even thought about at this point? I haven't thought about it at this point, but I have looked, definitely look at the schedule, and we know, you know we do have some. We have a game, ah, she, like the last game is in New York. Right. And prior to that, we have some days off between them. So, I mean, if that's the case, that we have to go that route, that's something we can consider. Because the, the, the all-star break is you get a long, you know five or six days off. So it's definitely a, a chance because we, I think we play Cle- or Chicago like on a Saturday and then we played New York on a Wednesday. And so there's some time off that that's needed. I don't, like I said, I hate to speculate because we won't know anything until later on today. All right, we're talking to head coach Scotty Brooks of the Wizards. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned the roller coach, coaster nature of the season, and I wonder, as a veteran guy, you've been around for a while now coaching, do you, with a situation like this, do you just keep preaching the same things over and over and hope, it, you know, it, it, it sinks in with these guys, or do you have to come up with creative ways to kind of motivate them or to get to them? What is the approach that you take? I mean, there's. I mean, every season has its own identity. I, I've been coaching and playing for nearly 30 years, so thing. I, I think you have to be real consistent in your approach. You know what's important to you and what's important to the team. Mm-hmm. I know when we play our best basketball, we're, we're, we 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 don't take the ball out of the net. We, we get the rebound and we get out in transition and we move the ball. I mean, last game. The last game against Atlanta, we probably moved the ball as well as any team I've ever been associated with, playing and coaching. 40 assists, uh, just incredible. Hopefully we can continue that. We have to be able to defend. We have to be able to rebound. And we've done it in spurts, and we've done it in, in good moments, but there's been moments that we didn't do it, and we didn't rebound, or we couldn't make shots. And there's so many different ways that we've lost some close games this year. But I think the, the key for us is to defend the ball on offense. So, uh, you know, last Thursday you guys played the Thunder and lost that game by nine, and Westbrook had 46, and uh, mm. Bradley had a great game. But, you know, just defensively you couldn't do much to stop him. Uh, now you got him here, you got him on the home court, even though it's without John. Uh, you know, how do you guys game plan to stop Westbrook? I mean, if he – it just seemed like in that game, Coach, whatever he wanted to do, he did. He did. If he wanted to get to the rim, he got there. Yeah, he and he has been playing on a high, high level right now. I mean, even last game against Philadelphia, yeah, I think he had 23 in the second half and nine assists alone. I mean, that would take me three or four games to get that. He did it in the half. But it was the thing that I love about him. He's so competitive. He competes every second down the court. You can't relax. Like we watched some film yesterday about in transition. If you get, if you get. You know, two or three guys back, that's not enough. you got to get all five guys. He has to see bodies. And, and if he sees bodies, he still is going to try to go through you. got to be you got to be aware. you got to be focused. And he's an amazing player. He's playing at another MVP. No one even talks about it. He's nearly averaging a triple-double again. again. He's like a, yeah. I don't know, a half assist or a half a rebound away from getting, having another triple-double. We definitely have to contain him and do the best that we can stop him in transition. And we can't turn the ball over. You turn the ball over against that team. His speed and the way he generates points, you can't, you can't, you can't catch him up. You can't catch up to him. Tough stretch here, obviously with the Thunder tonight and then Toronto on Thursday. But Toronto on Thursday, on the road again. Man, it seems like you guys have been on the road forever. And you play three teams that you know. I mean, Orlando's not very good, but they're not easy to beat at their place. Then you got Indiana, Philly. So this is a tough stretch here. This next five. There's no question. We have to step up and play well to get these these. You, know, you focus on the first game first. And Oklahoma's going to be a, a very tough team. They're talented. They got a lot of uh, really good players, and they got probably one of the best players in basketball. Well, so they've won eight straight. What um, what have you noticed? You know, just kind of scouting them. Um, you know, they got off to a tough start, and now they're starting to put it together. Was it just a time where they had to kind of feel each other out and kind of get into a chemistry thing, or or what's or is it just because Westbrook's playing at another level now? It's definitely Westbrook's at another level. I mean, he's, like I said, he's playing at an MVP level. I think the other big key is Stephen Adams. He's really developed. He's an offensive rebounding machine. I mean, he's, there's games he's had 10 offensive rebounds or more. 
against us. I think he had seven in the first half, so we definitely have to control his his ability to get their team extra possessions, and a lot of his offensive rebounds are put back layups for dunks.